So I don't tend to do super serious videos on this channel. I cover news occasionally of, you know, really big things that have happened, but I, I tend to leave it quite neutral in terms of the topics that I cover. Um, however, this one caught my attention in the last two or three hours or so, and it's, it's, it's probably a little too important to just kind of leave alone. And this video mainly serves as a warning to people. Anyone using the Node IPC package, anyone using a library that has Node IPC as a dependency, or anyone that is you know, doing either of those things with any project written by RAI Evangelist, I would recommend you look for alternatives pretty much as soon as possible, irrespective of where you are in the world. Because although, as the title says, this is anti-Russian malware that has been inserted into an open source project, and we'll talk more about that in a bit, it can affect other. It can affect people in other countries as well. So uh, Belarus is also specifically targeted, but it it's not amazingly written, and so it can just kill computers from people in other countries too. Um, and it yeah. So before we go into the whole malware thing, I do want to talk about the actual package itself very briefly. Not necessarily what it does, because you know what it does is it's it's fairly standard. Um, you know, it's a it's an interprocess communication library. It seems well, it's, it seems really rather useful to be honest, and a lot of people would agree. It's been downloaded seventy two million times. Uh, receives on average about four point seven million downloads a month uh, over its, what was it, about eight, like seven or eight year tenure. It's been around for a long time, this library. And for pretty much all of that time, it's been fine. You know, this, this isn't some new project that suddenly sprung up as some sort of crazy malware, you know, disguising itself as something else like a Trojan horse would. This is a well-respected, well-used library that has been hijacked by its own developer. And I can show you the code here. So uh, Brandon Miller did a fantastic job here at deobfuscating the code. The original code is, actually it's down here, um, this huge mess down here. The original commit actually still exists on the repository at time of recording. It doesn't belong to a branch because the developer has reversed the changes. I should also say there are forks of this as well then it might be worth looking at. Um, I don't know a huge amount of detail about all that. Um, as I said, I don't really use JS or this library in particular, so I don't know, but people you know, will be able to redirect you because this, um, as you can see, a lot of people have already gotten very angry about it. This is an extraordinarily small subset of people that have opened issues about this in the last two or three days. Um, and especially in the last few hours, there have been hundreds, hundreds upon hundreds, I think about 300 or something issues have been opened. Uh, I'm not going to show you any of them because a lot of them really aren't very nice. And although you can perhaps understand that, I don't feel comfortable showing that sort of content on the video. Although, of course, the repository is still, you know, very much around for people that want to uh, go have a look at uh, themselves. But a look at the code. We can see that is you know getting your IP geolocation from an API it seems a, a fairly normal API as far as I can tell. I imagine this is probably used quite a lot. And these constants are, are kind of the first things you notice because they are very reminiscent of root directories and things. And then the next thing you notice are these constants here that clearly indicate, and you've got here as well, that uh, if you are from Russia or you are from Belarus, if you use this package, it will delete every single file on your computer indiscriminately, providing it works. Because apparently, according to this uh, comment down here, oh, was it this one? No, there's a comment somewhere around here. Um, yeah, this one here. Apparently, it just doesn't even work properly in some instances, which is very interesting. As far as I know, it has caused a lot of damage already, though. So that's really rather upsetting considering that a lot of these victims are probably innocent people that aren't in favor of the war and just trying to get on with their lives 
and they've just been targeted by this. Because funnily enough, uh, this protest has uh, not gone amazingly well for the developer, let's say that much. But um, yeah, you can see this clearly just goes through, and uh, not only does it delete everything, which is already a kick in the teeth enough, but it replaces all your files on your system with a love heart. Um, because there's nothing like... <laughs> There's nothing like destroying people's livelihoods to show that you love someone. Um, so, yeah, pretty bad stuff going on here. Obviously, yeah, as this warning says, if you are going to run this, um, like if you want to do this for research purposes or whatever, then, oh, well, you obviously know what you're doing if you're doing it for research purposes. But if you want to run this just casually, run it in a sandbox, some sort of container, a virtual machine, something. Do not run it on your main computer. Otherwise, um, it will die. Or your files will die anyway. So, <laughs> malware like this isn't necessarily uncommon. You do get a lot of directed attacks with malware. One that's close to me was the WannaCry attack from a few years ago. I don't remember exactly when. But I live in the UK and that uh, malware slash virus slash whatever it was, I'm not 100% sure. I don't remember right now. But that attacked the uh, the UK's National Health Service, and it did quite a lot of uh, damage in terms of service availability. I don't think any records are lost in the end, but it was a ransomware attack on the National Health Service to essentially try and you know get some money out of the NHS. And this is one example of a directed attack. Uh, malware and viruses and stuff. A lot of it is directed at specific things. You know, a lot of it can be revenge, like it is in this, or just sheer hatred again like it is in this i suppose um it's not always just you know spreading emails to everyone it could possibly find and infecting as many people as possible sometimes it is very directed however in attacks of this nature really any nature to be honest it's normally done using some sort of closed source program or in the in the in the case of trojans a closed source application disguising itself as something that it isn't, um, specifically designed to be the malware and then you know putting stuff on top of it to make it look normal, by an anonymous group or individual. One thing I have uh, personally never seen before, I'm sure this has happened before, but I've never personally seen it because it, I feel as though it doesn't happen that often. And I think this is what's surprising people the most about this, is that this developer... And before I say this, I would recommend not spreading hate uh, to this developer. I don't want to be you know, responsible for death threats or anything. Please don't go harassing people um, about this. I'm sure this person has realized what they've done. This developer has very openly, under their main profile, as far as I can tell, implanted malware into a very widely used, very well-respected open source project. Um, which is, it's a ballsy move, <laughs> at the very least. Um, I'm, not, I'm not even going to jokingly give credit for that. But it, it's, it's a stupid move, really, is what it is, I suppose. Um, it's very, very dumb, very, very stupid, and as expected, it's attracted an awful, awful lot of outrage. Uh, which is, again, part of the reason I'm not showing you the issues, because a lot of that is very sternly worded, as you can probably um, understand. Yeah, this is a weird one. This is, this is a really weird one. Not only because of the method of delivery is just very strange... Oh, accidentally whacked my microphone there. Um, but, yeah, just the fact that it is what it is. I'd be surprised if this was the only malware that targeted Russia and Belarus. I would be surprised if this was the only thing that did anything similar to this. But to do it so openly, in an open source project used by so many people, seemingly constructed purely out of vitriol, is quite something and yeah if you are again if you are using a node ipc package if you're using you know some sort of software or program or script that is using the node ipc package or are using any program or application 
created in part or in full by our RAI evangelist, I'd recommend that you um, that you uh, find alternatives. I'm not going to do a deep dive into politics. That's not what this channel is. Everyone has their opinions. I have my opinions. I'm sure we can all agree, or at the very least, most of us, but at the very least, all reasonable people can agree that what Russia is doing is wrong. Um, and I send all my thoughts and love out to all the Ukrainians affected by this, all the people in the surrounding countries that are being affected by this or are worried that they're going to be affected by this or are affected by this in some capacity because it's not it's not just Ukraine, they're just taking the brunt of it at the moment. And I also send all my love to the Russians as well that are standing up against the regime, against the war, and all the Russians that are trying to flee the country uh, desperately as well. And all the innocent people that have been affected by this as well, because it's just, it's not fair. Um, but uh, yeah, with all that said, I don't really know how to end this one. Uh, I, I guess I'll see you for the next video, which will hopefully be a little bit more lighthearted uh, than this. And I, I suppose we'll have to see where this goes. But uh, yeah, I'll see you then.